tell you the concept of self-awareness, my being aware of my being aware of myself, um, mm -hmm. is claimed by some to be one of the distinguishing factors of uh, how humans differ from other animals. Uh, how has your wor work in uh, social neuroscience uh, and uh, studying uh, the brain under imaging techniques uh, given us a sense of what this self-awareness may be? We still don't really know what that self-awareness is, um, but you're right, it seems to be a critical distinction between us and other species that we can think about our thoughts um, and I can think about your thoughts and have this sort of meta level of awareness. And uh, why we have that, um, we don't really know what it gives us, uh, that, that, that sense of being a, um, a self, right? Um, that's one of the biggest mysteries, and I would love to understand that better before I die. <laughs> so, what are the ways you can approach that? We, I mean, you can have all sorts of pop ways of self-awareness and motivational and gurus and all sorts of that use self-awareness, but speaking as a scientist, how do, yeah. you, how do you push on self-awareness? How do I push on self-awareness? Um, I'd love to know what the physical basis is of self-awareness. Like when do we become aware of our own thoughts? Right? Um, there are times when we're just sort of behaving, and there are other times mm -hmm. where we're thinking mm -hmm. about our behavior. What's the difference in that level? Um, and uh, just understanding where the physical basis might help us get traction on why we have it. Have you done any experiments that at least begin to uh, address those kinds of questions? Um, we've done some hypnosis experiments to show that, um, that you don't have to have self-awareness to do action, um, which again calls into question why we do have it, why we do have that sense of awareness and what it's useful for. Um, I'd like to believe it's useful for something, but we just don't know. Uh, we haven't seen evidence yet. And how about locations in the brain? I mean, if you if you've shown where self-awareness uh, is not critical for certain things, uh, where you see in the brain, you, but you haven't discerned where it is. Right. Uh, no, and no one, I, to my knowledge, no one knows where it is. Um, there are people working on the problem of consciousness, like when do you become consciously aware of, of something. But this is a level above that. Yeah, right? this is a, a meta-consciousness. This is a you meta can, consciousness. You can so. be consciousness and have experiences of red and garlic and cheese and all that, but not right. think of yourself in that moment. Right, right. So what is, I mean, if consciousness is the hard problem, <laughs> <laughs> this is the super hard problem. Right. right. I think we're trying to figure out what does conscious experience look like first, and then try to figure out what is your, that experience of thinking about that experience. Can you like. get at it from a different way rather than through consciousness, which certainly sounds like a hard way because that's, a, that's, a, that's an early block to, to that level, but through yeah. uh, social neuroscience. In your work in, so, in social neuroscience, uh, does self-awareness come in in terms of a, a, a presupposition in some of your uh, uh, experimental paradigms? Well, I think um, social interaction requires both uh, self-awareness in the sense that um, I know what my motives are that are separate from your motives, that my emotions that are separate from your emotions, what I'm saying, what you're saying, some distinction between what I'm doing and what you're doing, and uh, so that we can react and turn take appropriately. That's critical, but also a loss of that self-other boundary seems to be important as well, in the sense of um, if we get on the same page and we sort of synchronize, I mean, you'll see people, um, they'll mimic each other's actions mm -hmm. and their emotions will sort of synchronize, even their heartbeats will synchronize. And that's sort of a loosening of the self-other boundary, mm -hmm. that I feel mm -hmm. what you feel. Right? So I think we need both of those things simultaneously. And the trick for social neuroscience is to figure out um, which side gets weighted when. And could you even have um, a society without a sense of self-awareness? And what would it look Without like? Without a sense of I'm my own being that is separate right, from you. Right. Um, it'd be very difficult to figure out um, a society that doesn't have that, although you think other animals solve this problem as well, and they don't have the kind of meta-awareness that we do. Yeah, they they certainly don't. societies of bees or birds right, or Right, and they seem to be able to coordinate action just fine, right? And they don't have a sense that 
we, we, we don't think they have a sense of themselves in the kind of way we do, um, but they manage okay. Right, but, but so therefore, what does this, this deeper sense of self-awareness do? Does it make the social interactions much richer at a, at, at a exponentially higher level? We don't, it might. We don't know. It might help us navigate and change on the fly. It might uh, allow us to be more flexible in the ways we think about things and change things in direct conversation. Right? Other animals tend to have more stereotyped kinds right. of actions and coordinations, um, whereas we can think through things flexibly on the fly. And maybe part of that is having that sort of meta level of awareness that allows us to navigate these things. And how often does this occur in a, in a normal human existence? Is this something that is, is just a, a, a focus, fleeting uh, sense once in a while? I mean, if I think of my activities the last week, when was I really self-aware? Well, yeah. you know, when I was stuck at the airport maybe. I don't, you know, or, or is this something that yeah. really pervades our lives? Uh, no, I think we have this sense that we have this stream of consciousness that is just continuous and we're completely aware of every single moment. I think it's uh, unlikely to be that. It's probably these snatches of time, um, pinpricks of time, um, that we are, we are so self-aware. And most of the time, we're actually just um, doing what we're doing without thinking about what we're doing. What, what is the implication of that for what self-awareness is then? I don't know. <laughs> what do you, what do you explain what you mean by that? Well, if self if, if self awareness is only the this uh, this ah. uh, pinprick of intervention in this stream of consciousness that we kind of go through and don't even remember, what what does that imply about what self awareness may be? I don't know, but it's it's it is the biggest question. I think the biggest mystery of science is to figure out what is what are those pinpricks if they are like that, if they are sort of snatches of time, and how do we link them together and create this sort of coherent narrative of self, even mm -hmm. though at mm -hmm. any moment that might not exist. Sure. I mean, that's fascinating, yeah. right? And we have to, uh, I'd love to understand it better.